Welcome to another Roundhill Art Center virtual art lesson. I'm Eric Scott and today we are going to focus on some drawing. We're going to focus not specifically on how to draw a certain picture but on a technique for making things look more three-dimensional. And so uh, you're, I'm going to share with you a technique how we can take simple shapes like circles and squares and even triangles and rectangles, uh, even more complex shapes like like hexagons or octagons or even letters and make them look more three-dimensional. And so let's go ahead and talk about what you're going to need and then we'll dive into the drawing. So today we are just simply drawing. So I have just some plain white drawing paper and a pencil. You can draw with anything, but I like having a pencil because I can erase it. And of course I have my uh, white vinyl eraser, but any kind of eraser will work. Um, so we're focusing on drawing 3D shapes or 3D forms. So we want, we want to kind of take it into the third dimension. So let's talk about dimensions first. So dimensions, we have 2D and 3D is what we talk a lot about in art. So 2D is this paper, it's flat. So it has two dimensions. It has length, so the long side, that is the length. This happens to be 12 inches long. And then the short side, that's the width, that's how wide it is. And that's about nine inches wide. Okay, so when we draw a shape, a shape has two dimensions. So if I draw a square, now a square is basically, you know, all four sides are exactly the same, same uh, length. Okay. Um, so it's two dimensional. It, it, it's so many inches wide, so many inches long as well. Same thing with a rectangle. If I draw it, Again, it's a flat shape right now. So, you know, we're, we're used to drawing these shapes. So uh, this is wide here and it's long here. So it has uh, length and width, but we wanna learn how to make it look like it has a third dimension. And sometimes we call that depth or height. So I wanna draw these so they look like they go back into space. Now there, there are other, shapes too that we have to kind of think about so i'm going to i'm going to show you how to, you could do a triangle and then we can even throw in a circle which is a little bit harder okay so these are all flat two-dimensional shapes so the easiest way to create that look of dimension um, to make it look 3d is to draw in the top and the side if we see them, okay? So with the square and the rectangle, that's pretty easy because of the sides, okay? So the way I wanna do this is I wanna draw in three diagonal lines, at least on my square, okay? And if I start at this one, maybe it'll be a little bit easier. I'm gonna draw a line that's diagonal. It means that it's slanted, okay? And then I wanna come to this corner and draw a line and then this corner. However, I want the lines, these diagonal lines to be parallel. I don't want this to be slanted up pretty straight. I want it to be slanted just like that one slanted. And I want it to be the same length or about the same length. So when I draw it, I want to go back and have it slanted and have it about the same length. Actually, I think I have it a little bit longer. So I think I'm going to make this one a little bit longer. Okay. And so that starts to look like the top of the square. And then I want to do the same thing on the side. I want to draw that diagonal line, that slanted line. So it's the same kind of slanted, you know, so basically the distance between here and here will be about the same as between here and here. Okay. So then I want to draw in my back. So when I draw in the back of my shape, well, the front of my square is straight up and down. So I want to do the same thing in the back, straight up and down. And then the top of my square right here is straight across. So I want to draw that straight across. Okay, so that's a horizontal line. That's horizontal, vertical, vertical. And all of a sudden, our flat looking two dimensional square starts to look like a cube. And I could do the exact same thing here with the rectangle. It's the same 
idea. So I want those three lines to be slanted. Maybe I'll do it a little bit longer this time. So I want it to be slanted the exact same way and I want them to be about the same length. I'll do one more over here. Actually, if I look at this, I always think of it, it kind of looks like a table that has been tipped over and that this is the table, the part where you eat off of, and these are the legs sticking out. Yeah, that's kind of how I think of it. And just like I've done before, just like with a square, I have to look at the front. So always look at the front here. Okay, so this is a vertical line that goes up and down. So when I do the back, I want to do the same thing. I want to go up and down, straight up and down. That's a vertical line. If I look at the front of my rectangle, that is a horizontal line. So I want to make sure that that's nice and horizontal. Now, if I'm really good about keeping these all the same length, then I, I don't have any erasing to do, okay? Um, or I don't have to, to lengthen or make any of my lines longer. Let me hold off on <clears throat> the the triangle and the circle for a minute because I want to caution you on something. I want to show you something. So what I what I see a lot of times is that people will do, you know, their square or rectangle. Oop, I'm not very straight. Now I, I'm pressing really hard with my pencil so that you can erase or so that you can see it, but it doesn't erase really well. So you do want to be careful of that. So what I notice is that people do like a couple of things whenever they're drawing their 3D forms, their 3D shapes. First of all is that they don't keep the diagonal line slanted. So this one will be slanted this way, but then this one will be slanted. Now I don't know how you, if you could see that, but look at this right here. This is much wider than it is up here. And that's a problem. And then over here they'll do the same thing. Instead of having it slanted as much, they'll come out like this. Okay. And again, it is not the same. Okay. And then that's going to create a box that looks really odd whenever I connect the lines. I mean, it still looks kind of dimensional, but it looks like the back of the box is much bigger than this, the front of the box. And that shouldn't be. That's because these three lines are not parallel. They're all slanted lines. They're all diagonal lines, but this one barely slants. This one slants quite a bit, and then this one's almost flat. Okay, so you have to be careful of that. Let me show you one more thing that a lot of people do, and that is when they might get the slant of their lines right. So they might draw in three lines, and they'll get them all slanted correctly but I don't know if you can tell this line is longer than that line and this line is longer than that line and so instead of paying attention to the front people will just go oh I'll just I just connect the back and so whenever I connect these two ends that line slants okay so it's not straight up and down it should really be straight up and down and then over here they do the same thing they connect the two so now the top of that slants. So that's a real big problem that whenever people do this. So um, anyway, so those, those are the two things that you want to try to avoid. As you practice it, you'll get better at it and better at it. But the idea is to have your three slanted lines. Well, not all shapes have three slanted lines, but in this case, the squares and the rectangles do. Um, so have my three slanted lines that are all the same length and all the same type of slantedness. Now the triangle and the circle are a little bit different. I'm gonna do that same slanted line. And so I'm gonna start here with the triangle. So when I slant it, it's gonna be the same kind of slant. And then I come up here and do the same thing. Now again, I wanna make sure it's, the, it's parallel with this, that it, it's the same kind of slanted line. Now, if I were to go over here and do it, oh, it would go through the triangle. <clears throat> and that's not what I want to do, okay? Because that would make it look like the triangle is see-through. So really with this one, I only see 
the side of the triangle because I'm not going to be able to see both of those sides at the same time unless I'm really looking down uh, on top of it. So what I want to do now is to connect the back. But again, I want to do like I've done here, look at the front. So here the front goes this way. And so when I come back here, I want to make sure that it slants the exact same way. And you can see I have a little extra. So if I were to connect the ends, that would make it look kind of odd. So I can go in here and erase that. <clears throat> and so now I have this, um, this tent-like shape. So you can see how that looks 3D. Now, if I wanted to do a circle, and a lot of times when we think about circles, we think about a ball. Well, I can't really draw in another line to make it look like a ball. I can do something. I can um, think of like a globe. If I think of a globe and I think about like the equator, okay, because I can't draw in other lines because it, it won't be a sphere. It won't be a ball. Um, but if I do draw in kind of a curvy line around the center, that starts to make it look like a ball. And if I do one coming down this way, That starts to make it look 3D. But, you know, if I'm doing that as for, um, you know, a, a solid ball, that doesn't look right. But if I'm doing a baseball or a basketball or something like that, that might be appropriate. Okay. <clears throat> I do want to show you another way of doing a circle, though, that will not be a ball or a sphere. So typically, if I'm just going to do a ball, I just do the circle. And then there's something else that we could do I'll show in a future video is about shading and how we can make that look rounded. Um, but instead of a ball or a sphere, I want to make this into a cylinder. So I'm going to do very much like I did with the triangle up here. I'm going to do two slanted lines. But what I want to do is I want to think about like, well, where do they slant? And I want to come out to like the very ends of it. I don't want to do it in here because that's going to look weird. So I want to come out all the way to the point where if I come out any further, I'm not touching the, the, um, the circle. So if I come out here and draw two slanted lines, so you see one there and then come up here, do the same thing, like kind of at the widest point of the circle. Now, I think I got that a little bit, a little bit wider than I should have. However, that's okay. Now, if I look at the front here, this is a curve. So when I do the back, I have to do the same kind of curve. So it's like I'm drawing half of a circle. And then I need to erase those little tiny marks there. And so that looks like a cylinder, like a can laying down on its side. Okay, so I could do it that way. Another way that you could do a cylinder is to make it stand up. Instead of doing a perfect circle, when we look at a perfect circle at an angle, it creates an oval. So if I draw an oval from the top and then do two lines all the way out here, and this time they're not going to slant, they're going to be vertical. And then to do the bottom, I have to make it the same as the top here. And so then that has to be curved the exact same way as the top. Okay, So you can start to see how these look dimensional. I mean, these still, these still look dimensional, but they look a little bit odd. Okay, because that, that one's too wide at the back and then that one's all slanted. Okay, so that's some of the basics of how you can draw. I want to show you a couple more ideas and then show how you could take this and, and apply it to something maybe that you've already done. So let me go ahead and switch out the papers. Okay, so we could do more complex shapes too. And I want to show you that and I want to show you how we can start to combine shapes. So let's go ahead and talk about combining shapes because we can use two shapes that we are already familiar with, that we've already done. So let's say that, hey, I wanted to want to draw a house. So I'm going to draw a house over here. And so typically, you know, we think about when we draw a house, a lot of people, a lot of young artists will draw a square or a rectangle for the bottom, and then they want to draw a triangle on top. Okay, very simple house, but doesn't look very 3D. It's actually very flat. So I want to make it 3D. And I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to start at the corners. I'm going to draw diagonal lines back. Maybe make them a little bit longer than I did before. 
That way the house is nice and long. So I can draw this, slant it out, slant it back like that. Come up here to this corner. Again, I want that same diagonal line. I'm going to come up here to the top of the triangle and do the same thing. So I want to try to keep those three diagonal lines exactly the same. Now, if I come over here, oh, if I try to draw my diagonal line, it'll go through my box, my house. If I come up here to the triangle, same thing is going to go through the house. And so I don't want to draw it over here because that's going to look really odd. Um, so I always want to keep it going in the same direction. So if I start here and I'm going, all three of those go back in the same direction. And then just like I've done before, this is just a box on the bottom. So I need to have a vertical line in the back. Okay, I'm going to purposely shorten this up a little bit. Nice vertical line. Because I can see, like, look how much longer this bottom line was than here. And the same thing, I think I got this top line really long. So if I were to connect them, that would look weird. So I want to come up here, and I want to make a parallel line that's slanted just like this. So sometimes, I'm, sometimes I find it's helpful if I kind of move my hand back and forth. I get that kind of how it's supposed to slant. And then I can erase... And so now I have a more three-dimensional looking house. And I could put windows and all that kind of stuff on it. Um, but let's talk about some uh, more complex shapes. So let's say that, hey, I want to do, uh, let's think about, uh, um, let's see, a hexagon. So a hexagon has six sides, right? So if I slant, come over straight, slant, slant, over straight, slant. Okay, so it's a six-sided figure. All right, and what I want to do is I want to think about, okay, I'm going to draw my lines back. Remember, I always like to start on the corner and then draw the line back. So thinking about how my lines are going to slant. So I'm going to make that come back. Okay, so that slants back a little bit. Do the same thing. Remember, the slant always has to be the same. And do the top part as well. Now when I come over here, oh, I would make, it would go through the front of my hexagon. Same thing here, go through my hexagon. Well, how about over here? Oh, it doesn't go through, but it, it looks very skinny. But I want to keep it slanted the exact same way, and I want to make it about the same length. So I'm going to start up here, and again, parallel. So I want to have the back of my shape parallel with the front and so almost looks like a rectangle there now this is you know this is straight across so that one's easy i'm going to come straight across and you know i have these little extras there and that's okay i'll erase them now this one's the hard one so i have this slant so i need to keep it slanted back here just the same i know it looks really skinny but let me erase these extra parts and you'll see how it starts to look very three-dimensional, okay? So complex shapes, a little bit harder, but it's still the same basic technique. So I can go even, even more complex. So if I'm thinking about letters, and that's kind of where we're gonna go next. So I'm gonna do a letter here. So the letter E is just basically made up of rectangles. So again, if I just draw out my diagonal lines, okay, so those are really easy and I can connect. So nice vertical line there, nice vertical line in the back, horizontal on the top, horizontal in the back, okay? But I don't wanna forget about these parts, okay? Um, these are like little rectangles sticking out. So I want to do the same thing. I start here on the corner and I want to go back. So I want it to be slanted just like this and I want it to be the same length. Same thing here. I want it to slant back. I want it to be about the same length and I think it's going to kind of touch that and go underneath. But right here, that's going to go underneath like that. So I wouldn't draw it from here or here or here because it would go through my letter. But now I have a 3D looking letter. Okay, 
So those are some of the basics of how to draw 3D. This is there are more advanced ways, but this is a good way if you don't know how to do some make it look dimensional. This is a good way of of learning and practicing. But I want to show you how you could take this and you know you could make a, a picture with a house. Um, but I'm going to go to something that we've done before, and that's letters. So I use the word hope, and I want to make this look 3D. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I just kind of think about the shape. So this is basically rectangles. This is a circle or an oval. Um, this is mo part of a rectangle, part of an oval. This is mostly rectangles. I've already done the E, but um, show you how to do it again. This, I'm not going to make it too long. I'm going to make them pretty short, but I'm going to do the same thing. Slanted. All the same slant, all the same length. So if I take one part at a time, I mean, I, I might want to try to draw every part of the H, but there's going to be a lot. So slanted all the same way, all about the same length, and then I'm going to draw in the back of my letter. And that's going to come straight across. Okay. And then I come over here. So I'm going to start down here. And again, when I draw this back, it doesn't cross over the H, so I have to do that corner but I want it to be the same length and the same slanted, the same kind of slant as before. Okay, so I'll do those three, because that's, that's basically a rectangle there. And then again, I connect the back, nice straight vertical line, and the top is horizontal because this is horizontal. Always look to the front, what's happening in the front. Now, when I look at here, all I have to do to finish up the back here of the H is to have this line go straight across because it's like the top of a box. Go straight across like that. Okay. Now when I look at that, that's looking pretty good, but there's something odd. Something's missing. If I look down here, this is missing down here. So I want to start from here and work my way back. So again, if I put my pencil on the corner and I go back and I'm going through a letter. So if I go through, go through, go through, go through, I, I don't want to draw that and make the letter look see-through. But down here, again, if I do that same slant, the same length, then I can draw this up like that. And it starts to look 3D. Okay. Now my letter O is a little bit more difficult. Okay. So if I look at this, I want to have that same slant. So it's really important that all my letters slant just like the first one. Um, so I want to find this, you know, kind of moving my, my pencil back and forth in that slant. And I want to kind of, until I hit, oh, right about there. So right until I hit the, the O. And so I'm going to draw that back a little bit. I mean, it's going to be the same length, the same slant. And then I kind of come down here. Where does that hit? Again, I'm moving my pencil kind of back and forth in that same slant. Oh, it hits right there. Okay, um, I think one of my slants is off a little bit. I think this one is. Needs to be slanted a little bit more. Now, that's not a whole lot of room there, but if I look over here, you see how that distance is? So I know with my O, it should be about the same distance. So if I'm right here on the side, like I am here, it's going to be about the same. And the, f the back of my O has to be curved just like the front of my O. And then come down. So I use that as a mark to kind of know where I should go. Okay, so that makes it look a little bit more 3D. Now, how about the inside? Well, I can't draw any lines back because it's curved. So what I want to do is I want to think like, okay, like maybe right about here. Like, you know, it's kind of underneath here. And then it's going to be turning around. And it's going to come out. So what I'm trying to do, and I don't think I did a really good job of it. So I'm trying to make this curve exactly like that curve right there. So it start, it looks pretty, eh, I'm not, it's not 100%. I don't like it 100%. So anyway, that's a little bit better. Okay, and then move on to my P. So again, the same kind of slant as I have over here on my H. Same length. 
Okay. And then I want to connect. I'm not going to, well, I guess I can come over here. So it's like the O right there. I want to have that slant about the same. Okay. And then when I do the back, uh-oh, look, if I draw it, it's going to go through the O. So I'm going to draw it up and then stop at my O and then come up here and finish it. And so that way, that part looks like it's behind the O. And then when I do the top, look at the top of my P, and it's the same kind of curve. Makes that look 3D. Now, I don't have to worry about anything on the inside because this is real small. If it was bigger, then I might do something like I did on the inside of the O. All right, and then finally my E, those slants. So the same kind of slants. All right, and then I want to connect that. It's got to be nice horizontal. And then just like with my P, the E kind of goes behind the P, overlaps. Okay. Right here, this is going to be a slant, and here's going to be a slant. Again, if I'm drawing it through the E, then I don't want to actually draw it. Okay, and there's the word hope, and it looks pr looks pretty 3D. Um, my, I think my O needs a little bit of work, but it looks a little bit flat back here. Now it's a little bit better. All right, I hope you got a lot out of of this video and um, now you understand a little bit more about how to make simple shapes look more three-dimensional make them look more realistic in a way so instead of just drawing a square to, to be a box you could draw draw it and make it look three-dimensional make it look like it has a top and a side um, and then you can start to put those together you know, like like I showed you in the demonstration I did something that looks like a house so you could do a whole scene and and have a three-dimensional house or you could do letters like I showed you and and create something that's a little bit more than just flat letters so anyway hope that you uh, enjoyed this and Feel free to, to try this out, do your own kind of three-dimensional drawings, and we would love to see it, so make sure that you tag us. And until next time, thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, happy creating.